हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम चैप्टर थ्री ईआरपी कंट्रोल एंड ऑडिट आई एम सी ए पंकज देश पांडे यूर मेंटर फॉर टूडे सेशन लेट स्टार्ट वॉट आर द कंटेंट्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट इंस्टॉलिंग एंड एक्टिवेटिंग टेली सिक्योरिटी कंट्रोल टेली डॉट नेट फीचर टेली ऑडिट डेटा बैकअप एंड रिस्टोर स्प्लिटिंग ऑफ कंपनी डेटा इम्पोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ डेटा basically today for discussion of erp we are using tally as a role model and actually it is not about uh, discussing the tally software it is about discussing the concept of erp with the help of one of the software and that one of the software is tally erp9 tally erp9 is a very popular software in our country that's why we are using this particular software as everybody is familiar with this software so installing and activating tally erp9 how to install if you don't have tally erp9 software how you can get this particular software you can go to the tally website by uh, typing this address in your browser that is www.tallysolutions.com here i am just clicking on this link hyperlink it will open the tally softwares uh, the tally's website here there is an option downloads i am clicking on this download option after clicking on this option the control center a download center will open depending on the speed of your net it will take some time this is the next screen i am clicking on this option that is tally erp9 this is called as download center of tally erp9 here there are variety of options for example this is 32 bit tally erp9 light installer tally erp9 32 bit full installer what is the difference between light installer and full installer check the size look at this size of this file 30.7 mb for light installer and 131 mb for full installer what is the basic difference the basic difference is nothing but the help file this 30.7 mb that is the light installer it does not contain help file and this 131 mb software contains help file one more version of tally is available here that is 64 bit tally for 64 bit operating system a separate tally software is available again it is light and full below that there are variety of files here which can be downloaded as per need at present i am just clicking on this light installer as soon as i click on this light installer the installation the downloading of this particular file will start i have already downloaded it so i am not downloading it again i am clicking on this cancel button once you have installed the tally software after installing you will have to start the tally software and you will have to activate it and activation of tally software requires a valid user id and password now let us start tally software let us go to desktop it is already downloaded and installed i am clicking on this software whenever you are starting tally software for the first time you will get this type of task startup screen there are variety of menus available here the first menu activate license second is reactivate license what is the difference between activate and reactivate activate menu has to be used for the first time whenever you are activating tally software for the first time you will have to use activate license and if you are using if you are reactivating it for the second time you can use reactivate license reactivate license menu is used for this particular purpose only below that there is a menu work in educational mode what is it you can always use a tally in educational mode educational mode is a demo mode and it does not require any type of license i am pressing enter here there are two options silver edition mode that is single user and gold edition mode that is multi user i can select any of the option and start the tally software you may look at this particular portion here educational mode is written here there is no license so this software can be used for education purpose with a limitation limitation there are few restrictions in this software one of the big restriction is date restriction you cannot use any date except first second or 31st of any of the month so how many dates in all how many dates can be used in an educational mode of tally software first and second of every month there are 12 months so first and second multiplied by 12 that is 24 and 31st date please remember it is not the last day of the month it is 31st so 31st date comes for seven times in seven months during a period of one year so 24 plus 7 you can use 31 dates in educational mode of tally we will not be using tally software in educational mode now i am once again 
starting the tele software and we will try to activate this let us try to reactivate tele license i am clicking on this reactivate license and pressing enter the user id email id of the password is already entered here let us type the password internet connection must be on at this point of time i am pressing enter as soon as i press enter i will get a message congratulations your tele license is successfully activated welcome to the world of tele erp9 so we have activated tele erp9 license now look at this position here i am getting the serial number so serial number displayed here uh, means that the license of this particular tele software is activated so this is the first screen of tele software before we start anything in tele let us create a company i am creating a company accounts in inventory books beginning from and financial year from there is one particular warning about these dates never ever try to alter these dates because if you are altering these dates it may damage your data forever here i am setting this option to yes use security control for the purpose of simplicity i am just typing administrator user id as a and password as a once again repeat password once again a forgetting your password will render your data inaccessible this is the warning given so please ensure that you remember the password set here forever use tele audit feature i am saying yes enter and i am accepting this screen now i am opening the company with using the same user id and password in case of erp the first and foremost issue is security control as there will be number of users spanning across variety of departments using the same set of data security control becomes a very major issue in case of all types of erp system let us try to understand this security control issue with the help of tele software what is there in security control in case of security control there are some aspects there is a concept called as security types there is a concept called as users and there is a concept called as password policy let us work with these three issues in security control with the help of tele this is the tele company we have created in tele how to set the security control there is a button here cmp info it means company info you can press alt f3 on keyboard or alternatively you can click here with the help of mouse i am clicking with the help of mouse then security control in case of security control there are three menus first is users and password second is the types of security and third is password policy we can go to any of the option there is no as such no sequence needed to be followed i am going to users and password first and in users and password by default four types of security levels are created by tele one is data entry owner tele.net auditor and tele.net users for the time being i am selecting this particular security level that is owner now let us assume that there are four types of users four users in our organization for the sake of simplicity we are just considering four users the first username i am creating a username as swapnil password is optional here i am not typing any password second user he is also an owner at present by default i am selecting for the time being i am selecting the security level as owner because i have not created any security level for these users one more user i am creating third user let us create and fourth user once again create the fourth user these are the four users i am saving the information now these four users have got different roles in the organizations they are playing different roles we will be we will be creating four different security levels for these users for example swapnil swapnil is the owner of the organization he is the partner in the organization so i am creating a security level for him for example i am creating a security level as let us create security levels for example let us start from the bottom Rasika is a user who is an operator in accounts department. I am creating a security level uh, for this particular user. Use basic facilities of. I am setting as use basic facilities of owner. 
this particular security level owner is the topmost security level so what will be the maximum facilities allowed for this particular user i'm setting it to owner days allowed for backdated vouchers let us say seven days seven days of backdated access will be allowed cut off date for backdated vouchers this cut off date shall be <coughs> overriding the days allowed for backdated vouchers here we can set any particular cut off date for example 31315 can be set as cut off date set alters rules for print before save i am saying yes this particular feature can be used for preventing printing of any particular voucher before it is saved this particular feature is extremely useful in preventing frauds in the organization for example i am allowing one particular voucher that is contra and i am disallowing all voucher types for print before save in this case the user will not be allowed to print any voucher unless and until it is saved now on left hand side what we can set we have to set try to read what is written here this allow the following facilities here we can disallow some facilities to a particular user on right hand side we will be allowing facilities to a particular user or group of users for example disallow if i am saying create alter create alter accounting masters accounts masters then create alter back dated vouchers then create alter company features if these three facilities are disallowed what will be what will be happening create alter accounts masters account master means this user will not be able to create or alter any type of master data let us start with a simple security level enter and accept we have created a security level now let us create one more security level operator then accountant use basic facilities of owner days allowed let us say 15 cut off date let us ignore yes contra all voucher types allowed to connect company use tally.net authentication no here once again create alter accounts masters create alter backdated vouchers and i'm just going on right hand side i am not specifically allowing any type of facility because on left hand side i have not disallowed such facilities i am pressing enter accepting once again types of security once again i am creating a security level manager once again owner days allowed 30 days of backdated access then i am selecting alter accounts masters then create alter back dated vouchers enter and accept so far we have created three security levels now let us go to users and passwords here swapnil is an owner let us not change the security level of swapnil amit is a manager i am selecting the manager security level for amit then for mayura i am selecting the security level as accountant and for rasika i am selecting the security level as operator for rasika these three uh, types of users have got three different roles in the organizations to play so they will be allotted separate security levels now i have saved it and i am pressing enter and accepting it we have used so far two menus that is users and password and types of security let us go to third option that is password policy activate a password policy do you want to activate i am saying yes as soon as i activate some additional fields appear before me minimum password length 8 you can specify minimum password length i am selecting typing the four specify advanced password length i am saying yes as soon as i press yes some options appear before me minimum number of alphabets let us say Two minimum number of numericals. Let us say one minimum number of special characters. Let us say one. Here, what will happen? A user will be forced to have a password with combination of alphabets, numbers, and special characters, and that too only as specified here. Password expires after. We can set the period. Let us set sixty days. Notify before password expires. Yes, 
notify before let us say 7 days restrict the use of old password let us say yes number of old password let us say 3 means the user will not be able to use the same password which was used 3 times earlier that is he will have to change the password every time a new password must be selected and after changing the password for 3 times he can reuse the old password once again that is possible change password on first login i am saying yes here the user interface is extremely easy and anybody for anybody it is easy extremely easy to understand what is the meaning of any field every field allow users to change password i am saying yes now it is asked to me accept it is my choice whether to accept or not it was just to show a demo of this and not deliberately accepting this and pressing escape so these changes are not accepted at all at present now what we can do i am pressing alt f1 or alternatively i am press i can press this particular shut company button to shut the company name of the company is fdp once again i am selecting the company fdp now let us assume that rasika is entering into this particular company for rasika the password was blank deliberately for the sake of simplicity we had set the blank password for her i'm pressing enter accounts info ledger here there is no option for creating or altering the altering the master data the access is restricted rasika can go to display only and she can display the ledgers otherwise it is not possible for this particular user to make any type of changes in accounting master data that is not possible now let us check the number of days for backdated vouchers <coughs> for this purpose we need to create vouchers but at present ledgers are not created in this company so let us create the ledger first of all i am shutting this company i am selecting the same company once again i am opening it from admin id now i am going to accounts info ledger and create option i am creating a ledger for example a rent ledger under indirect expenses now i am creating a ledger capital under capital account and one more ledger that is salary under indirect expenses we have created three ledgers here this is admin id so all the menus are open in front of us i am pressing alt f1 to shut the company now i am selecting the company once again same company now let us assume that rasika is using her id to open the tally company accounting vouchers let us create a receipt voucher cash account debit capital account credit let us assume that we are bringing in a capital of rupees 1 lakh enter capital is introduced now what to do this voucher was recorded on 1st april now let us record a voucher on 10th april accounting vouchers i am going to payment voucher by pressing f5 cash ledger is selected let us say rent rent is rupees 10000 i am entering the narration enter and accept we have entered a voucher on 1st april we have entered a voucher on 10th april now let us once again try to record a voucher on 2nd april I am pressing F2, date is changed to 2nd April, cash and let us try to record a voucher salary, salary account debit 20,000 and cash account credit 20,000, this is the voucher. I am pressing enter and I am accepting this particular screen. No access allowed, why? Because we had set the backdated access for Rasika for 7 days only. The backdated access will be calculated from the date of last entry. You may look at this particular date of last entry. It is 10th April and 7 days. If we are trying to record a voucher on 2nd April, it becomes 8 days. So access is not allowed for Rasika. Rasika, this user is a junior level accountant 
and she is not supposed to have a look at balance sheet and profit and loss account it is not uh, needed by her to view balance sheet and profit and loss account so we will have to prevent the access to balance sheet and profit and loss account or any such type of sensitive reports which are not needed for her so let us try to prevent this access once again i am pressing this company info button after pressing company info button i am going to security control in case of security control i am opening this types of security menu for rasika the security level was operator i am opening it and here what we can do we can say full access to balance sheet is disallowed enter and i am pressing enter enter key to accept i have accepted this was admin id once again i am shutting the company i am selecting the company same company and now rasika is logging now look at this place only profit and loss account option is available balance sheet is not available let us repeat this activity once again at present the profit and loss account is visible for rasika she can open the profit and loss account she can view the voucher she can alter delete or modify the voucher let us try to prevent access to profit and loss account for this particular user junior accountant i am pressing alt f1 to shut the company select company i am opening the same company once again user id and password i am entering once again i am pressing alt f3 then security control after that types of security operator and on left hand side what i am doing i am saying full access to profit and loss account is disallowed enter and i am pressing control a for accepting the screen at once no need to press enter 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 again shut company select company login with rasika's id enter now look at this balance sheet is missing profit and loss account is also missing so she will not be able to view these two reports thousands of permutations and combinations are possible in security control and tally this is a feature of erp software erp software must be flexible enough to provide this feature that is to control and allow access allow or disallow access to variety of features and reports for variety of users spanning across all department after security control the second more important feature one of the more one of the most important feature of erp system is accessing data from remote location organization may have offices at different locations which are physically uh, separate there might be some locations which are separate by 1000 or more kilometers also even more than that so it is necessary to connect these location to the central database to the central server because every user has to access the central database only now tally erp9 provides this type of facility using tally.net what is tally.net let us look at this particular uh, slide there are variety of users for example user 1 user 2 user 3 user 4 user 5 all these users are local users they are directly connected to the tally data server which is stored locally and they are connected with local area network that is lan there are some users they are not in the same place they are not sitting in the same place and their their location is a remote location which is far far from this particular office place so remote user 1 remote user 2 3 4 5 and so on there may be any number of users how they will be connecting with the local tally data server for this purpose we need to have access to tally.net server this is a facility this is a feature provided by tally whereby a remote user can access access the local data stored anywhere in the world just by using any type of regular internet connection no special line lease line etc is needed any type of internet connection can be used for accessing the data how this can be done let us see i am going to tell you and in tally for this purpose i need to have certain settings remote login can be used in educational mode also for this purpose what type of setting need to be done for example i am selecting a company i am opening the same company once again from me uh, from admin id i am pressing alt f3 
then going to security control, users and password, what I need to do here. Here I will have to allow access, allow access to the remote user. For example, I am selecting the security level as tally.net user. I am typing one email ID, which is a registered email ID with tally. The cursor here does not stop on password field. Please remember the password is for, for the first time is sent by tally. Later on, we may change the password. Allow remote access. This must be made. Yes. I am selecting yes and saving the information. This email ID is already registered with tally. Now what I got available to do. If I have to access data from remote location, that company must be connected. For example, this is the button here, connect company. I am clicking on this button just for the purpose of demo. The company must be connected. The remote location company must be connected. We may not be, uh, we may not required, uh, it is not required for us to connect the company. Here you will get one particular symbol C. C means company is connected. At present, this is not the company which we wish to access. So we will disconnect the company. As soon as we disconnect the company, this C is gone. I am shutting the company. Now I wish to access the data that is stored on remote location. I am selecting this particular option. Login as remote user. I am selecting this option. I will have to type one email ID that is registered with the tally. I have typed the email ID and now I am typing the password. After the typing of password, I will press enter. It will take few seconds. There are two types of companies. One is online companies. Second option is offline companies. I can select any one of the company. I'm selecting this particular company. I'm pressing enter. As soon as I press enter, again, it will take few seconds and the company will get loaded. Again, the time taken will be dependent on speed of internet connection at both the locations. Now, the company is open. I can access the company. I can do anything which I like. And this particular my activity, my access will be dependent on the access given by the administrator to this particular user ID. Now, look at this portion. Remote user details, my remote ID, my login time, my lost login time and duration. Each and everything is displayed here. The speed is comparatively low, but it works. If the load of data is not so heavy, it will definitely work. I can press enter. I can check any type of uh, report. I can do whatever I like, depending on the access you want to be. So this is how to use remote login. Now <clears throat> I am shutting the company and I am logging out from remote user. For using this remote login feature, one option is required, one, one particular requirement is there. Look at this, tally.net subscription valid till 30th April 2016. You need to renew your tally validity, validity of tally.net subscription. It is valid till 30th April 2016. Once it is expired, this remote login will not work. So it is a compulsion. Management of tally from remote login for, from remote location, it can be managed very easily by using this control center feature. I'm going to this control center. Now I'm typing my own password. The control center will get open. Control center option is used for managing variety of aspects of administering tele software. For example, licensing and configuration. I am going to this license management. If I wish to surrender the license, I can just select this option surrender and I can surrender the license. At present, I am not surrendering the license. TDL management. TDL stands for Tally Definition Language. The variety of add-ons are available in Tally. You can buy these add-ons, you can use these add-ons and management of add-ons that is adding add-on, removing add-on is possible by using this TDL management feature. Account profile management. I am going to this account profile management. Your own account can be managed from this place. You can change your organization name, your address, your <coughs> contact details very easily from this account profile management. At present, I am not changing anything. 
user management you can create multiple users remote users from this place also users can be created from telesoftware and users can be created from control center remotely also these are the users created so far i am just pressing escape and coming out of this particular menu there are other menus also that is company delegation change account admin <coughs> these again two menus are useful in administrating the tele software let us discuss one more aspect of erp environment this aspect is known as synchronization very few softwares very few erp softwares provide this type of facility tele is one of the software which provides synchronization facility what is the difference between synchronization and remote login in case we are using remote login the data will be stored at one place only and everybody will access the data stored at central location here in case of remote login the data is stored centrally so for a remote location if he wishes to access the data he needs to be connected to stay connected with the internet the internet connection must be on at both the places this is the basic requirement in case of remote login synchronization is a different aspect in case of synchronization the data is stored on central server as well as local server also the data is stored in a distributed way let us have a look at this particular slide here there are different locations location 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 these are remote locations physically apart from each other tally data is stored at one particular location this is 11th location now if these 10 locations wishes to access the data stored at tally data server what will be happening they will have to connect the tally uh, server and tally server will in turn connect with local tally data server now what will happen the data will be stored at two places for example this location one let us consider that this is branch one i am sitting at present in delhi my data is stored in delhi and location one that is my branch my branch is in kanpur second branch is in lucknow third branch is rachi fourth branch bangalore fifth branch hyderabad and so on the data related to the branch lucknow is stored at two location that is lucknow as well as central location that is delhi similar is the case with location 2 second location may be kanpur the data relating to kanpur will be stored at kanpur as well as delhi means delhi that is the central data server will be having branches data as well as its own data delhi server will be having all the data but branches will be having their respective data only what will happen in synchronization synchronization can be done after every each and every voucher entry or it can be done once in a day also you can do synchronization any number of times during a day let us assume that we are synchronizing the data in the evening we have recorded let us assume that we have recorded 100 vouchers at location 1 that is kanpur and the data is to be stored centrally in delhi so what will happen the person who is sitting in kanpur he will record the vouchers and he will press one button after clicking of one button the data will travel to delhi server through tally.net server delhi server will be having data from all the branches and the data relating to respective branch that is kanpur lucknow rachi patna whatever it may be they shall be stored at respective locations only the biggest advantage of synchronization feature is that the load of data is reduced to a great extent at branch level every branch will be having their own data so the data size will be small point number 2 that is advantage number 2 of synchronization is that continuous internet connection is absolutely not needed internet connection is required for a particular period of time say let us say for few minutes only internet connection will be required to be on at both the locations that is branch location and head office location for few minutes maybe 5 to 10 minutes to transfer the data generally the data transfer speed in case of synchronization is 100 vouchers a minute so even if you are recorded 1000 vouchers it will required approximately 10 minutes to transfer the data third advantage of synchronization is that transaction data is separated 
and master data can also be separated. The branch master data and server master data may not be the same. It may be different. So again, the load, load of data is reduced at locations. So synchronization has got so many different types of advantages and it will really work very good where there are multiple locations and many a times internet connectivity may create a problem. So in this case, even 10 minutes of internet connection on a daily basis is more than sufficient for synchronization. Now let us discuss something about tally audit feature. ERP software, it is required that ERP software must provide audit trail also. That is the trail for tracking the changes in voucher. What is tally audit feature? As far as tally is concerned, there are two types of audits in tally. One is quantitative audit and other is qualitative audit. What is quantitative audit and what is qualitative audit? What I mean to say? Quantitative aspect of audit deals with figures only. For example, what is the amount of TDS payable for the period of month, for the period of 30th April, for the period of April month? For example, let us consider a small case. What is the amount of TDS payable for the month of April 2015? This is a matter of audit. Once the auditor checks it, it will uh, uh, the auditor will arrive at the final figure of TDS payable. If this figure changes later on, it is a matter of concern for auditor. So this aspect is about quantity, quantity of figures that figures must not change and figures must be correct. The amount of TDS payable for a particular month must be arrived at correctly. But after making payment of TDS, whether the payment of TDS was made before the due date, on or before the due date, this aspect is not about quantity, this aspect is about quality. Means have we paid the TDS amount within due date. TDS amount is calculated correctly and it is paid correctly. This is about quantity and whether the payment has been made on or before the due date, it is a matter of quality. So these are the two aspects. Now let us discuss these aspects with the help of tally audit feature. I am shifting to tally and for this purpose, I am opening one particular company. This is gateway of tally screen. I am pressing D for display and D for daybook. Daybook will show us all the vouchers recorded during a particular period or for a particular date. I am pressing F2 and making it blank. So all the vouchers are appearing in front of me. There is a button here. I am pressing F12. After pressing F12, there is an option entered oblique altered by. I am saying yes. And I am pressing enter to view who has entered these vouchers. These are the vouchers entered by the user Rasika. Now I am shutting the company. To show you a demo of audit feature in Tally, I am opening the company once again with some other user's ID. I am using Amit's ID. Now Amit has entered into this company. He has gone to display daybook. What is happening? This is a voucher. <clears throat> I am selecting the complete period. These are the vouchers. These are the vouchers recorded by some other users. Now auditor will audit these vouchers and the auditor after checking the vouchers, he will put a mark on this voucher electronically. How an auditor can put a mark electronically? For this purpose, we have to enter the company from auditor's ID or admin ID. I am using admin ID that is A and A. There is an option here, display, then statement of accounts and tally audit. This is the option. Here there are three options, voucher types, masters and users. I am going to this voucher types, receipt voucher. I am selecting the receipt voucher. I am opening this voucher, open. This is the voucher. Auditor will check this voucher and if it is found to be correct, there is a button here on right hand side, accept one. I am accepting this voucher. This voucher is gone. You can check that there are now six vouchers. Let us accept one more voucher that is from July. It is a rent voucher. Once again, I open the voucher. If it is found to be correct, I will put one electronic tick on the voucher by pressing F7 that is accept one. I have clicked it. 
now you may observe that there are five vouchers to be audited these vouchers are yet to be audited let it be as it is i am pressing escape i am shutting the company now select company once again i am using some <coughs> other users id to open the company amit has used amit has opened the company from his own user id and password now let us assume that this particular voucher it is for rupees 10000 now amit is fraudulently changing the figure of this voucher to 12000 amit is reaccepting this voucher amit has reaccepted the voucher and if auditor comes on the next day and he checks the list of unaudited vouchers he will get the list of all the unaudited vouchers once again i am going to the same menu that is display statement of accounts tally audit and voucher types five vouchers are newly created vouchers and one voucher is altered i am clicking pressing enter on this particular voucher i will get the information entered by sokhil and altered by amit on 16th july 2015 so the track of changes can be kept and monitored very easily by using this audit feature audit feature can be used in two ways one for tracking the changes in vouchers and other for tracking the changes in master data here i can go to the master data there are certain ledgers i can open these ledgers this is the master data here also i can press f7 to accept the voucher accept the sorry accept the ledger head i can accept once it is accept if there are any changes to this particular master data again it will be flashed along with the name of the user and the date of making change next aspect of erp that is data backup and restore let us try to understand this concept also with the help of tally erp and software backup can be taken from the tally software itself or backup can be taken from operating system that is windows or there may be one more system of taking backup that is auto backup let us try to understand all the three types of backup techniques if we wish to take the backup from tally software itself there is a menu here i am going to this backup menu i am clicking on this backup enter here the source that is the source means from where you are taking the data and destination means where you are putting the data i am selecting the destination as d colon backslash what type of companies i wish to take backup for i can select all the companies one by one or i can select few companies and select end of list here i have selected four companies for backup i am pressing accept button the backup is over where this backup has gone this backup has gone to d drive let us check i am going to d drive this is d and this is the backup file tbk 900.0016.22 6.22 mb this is the backup file now we have taken the backup and it is a compressed file containing data of all the four companies all the four companies and all the files regarding four companies are compressed into one file and this backup file is generated can we rename this file yes in windows we can rename the file but we should not rename it because it may uh, it may make your file unreadable for tally so it is advised not to rename the file let the name of file be as it is this file can be kept on a pen drive this can be kept on an external hard disk it can be kept on cloud so it is always better to have alternate copy of data backup also now how to restore this backup in case of need can we restore this backup yes definitely we can restore this backup let us try to understand how we can restore for example this is the menu restore menu i am clicking on this restore menu as soon as i click on the restore menu here i am getting destination and source where do i wish to put this backup and source means from where i want to take the backup for restoring by default it is the same path c colon program files tally dot erp and tally data the source is d colon i am pressing enter as soon as i press enter on right hand side here you may observe that i am getting a list of companies the list of companies is shown along with the folder number of the company 
and the date and time of taking backup. I can restore all the items or I can restore one single company. Let us try to restore this company. End of list and accept. Company number 10,008 in use, override the information. At present, I am trying to restore the company at same location. The company already exists there. If I wish to restore, I can restore and override the information. If no, then I can select an option for saying no. At present, I am saying yes. The data is restored successfully. This is very simple how to restore and how to take backup. Alternate way of taking backup that is from Windows. I am minimizing this study and I am checking the data location. Data location. For checking the data location, you can always go to Tally and check the location. For example, this is select company. I am clicking on the select company. You can check the location here. This is the data location. C colon program files Tally ERP9 Tally data. This is the location. Let us go to this location. I am minimizing it. This is C colon program files, then tally ERP9 and tally data. This is the location. Each folder represents one single company 10,000, 10,007, 10,008, 10,009, 10,010, 12,456. So, this is the folder representing each and every company. As a matter of curiosity, let us go inside this particular folder. There are different files in this folder. And these files, these files are interrelated with each other. Again, there is a suggestion here, never ever try to rename these files, otherwise your data will become useless. So let it be as it is. The files <coughs> here are having different memory size. For example, this manager.900, it is having the highest memory 1501KB. Let us not make any changes here. I'm pressing backspace. Now this is the data. I can just press Ctrl C here or I can press right click on mouse and copy the data. If I copy this, I can take a backup on desktop also. I am clicking right uh, click button here and I am pasting the data. The backup is over. At the time of restoring the data, you can just simply put this folder at the desired location and make it work. You can start, you can use Tally software from Pendrive also. The data in Pendrive can also be read by Tally and entries can be made, it can be returned uh, uh, in Pendrive also, there is no issue. Third point here, auto backup. Tally ERP9 provides a facility of taking the auto backup without any human intervention, without any intervention of user. Let us learn how auto backup can be taken by Tally. I am selecting a company, selecting this company using an admin ID. I am clicking on this CMP info that is company info button, then alter. I am selecting the company name. On left hand side you will get one option, enable auto backup. I am saying yes. And I am pressing enter. Accept yes. where this auto backup has taken by Tally. Auto backup will be taken whenever you open the company. Whenever any user is opening the company, the auto backup will be taken and it will be taken at the same location where Tally data is stored. Let us go to that location and check the auto backup file. I am going to my computer, then C colon, then program files, then Tally ERP9 and Tally data. Auto backup was taken for one particular company not all the companies. Let us identify the company. It was FDP that is 10,000 company. So the auto backup file will be present in the folder named as 10,000. I am going to this folder. I am opening this folder. Look at this file. abk.900. This file is made for taking auto backup. Auto backup will be taken along with the regular data. It will be stored along with the regular data. So you need to store this auto backup at some other place. Look at the memory size of this particular company, uh, this particular file. It is 2176 KB. You can have one more copy of auto backup. How you can have it? I am pressing F12 and I am going to data configuration. 
There is an option here, enable auto backup copy. I am saying yes. Location of auto backup files. Here you can specify the location. That location may be on the same computer or it may be on a another computer in the network. For example, I am saying that D colon backslash is the location of auto backup files. I am pressing enter, enter, enter. Now the backup will be taken, the auto backup will be taken at two locations. One is regular data location and other at D colon. Let us go and check. I am minimizing it. My computer and D colon. This is TABK900. Here the name of file is TABK900 and this is Tally Auto Backup file. How to restore auto backup? If you wish to restore the auto backup, you need to come to get your tally screen. Now here press Control Alter and K. I am pressing Control Alter K. I will get an option for selecting the company. I am selecting the company. As soon as I select this company, Indra Dhanu Consulting Private Limited, I will get list of auto backup files. Look at this versions of auto backup files. How many versions are there? At present in this file, there are 44 versions of auto backup. And you may look at the date and time of taking auto backup. As for your own choice, you can restore the backup version which you require at present. You may require an earlier backup version also. Tally will maintain 60 versions of auto backups. So 60 different versions for 60 different dates can be stored in auto backup file. This is the biggest advantage with Tally auto backup. Tally by auto backup will take 60 copies of auto backup. This is their advantage. But at the same time, there is one more one disadvantage about this auto backup. It consumes a lot of disk space. If the size of your original data is 1 MB, your auto backup file may go into 100 MB, 200 MB or more than that also, depending on the number of versions it is keeping with it. Let us move to the next feature that is splitting of company data. Company data is required to be split into two parts just to reduce the load of data. And this is a really helpful feature because all the master data will be copied as it is to the new company. User needs to just split, uh, split the company uh, generally at the end of financial year. And once the figures for a particular financial year are over, you may cut the data into two pieces and you may start working in the new company immediately. Let us learn how it can be done. I am selecting a simple company that is made for this purpose only. It is a company. Let us go to Alter F3, then Alter Menu. I am selecting the company. Look at the period. The financial year is from 1414, books beginning from 1414. This company has got data entered into two financial periods. First is 1415 and second is 1516. Now we wish to split this company into two parts from 31st March 2015. There will be two types of companies, one up to 31st March and one starting from 1st April 2015. So for this purpose, I am going to this company in first screen. Then split company data, I am clicking here. Before I can split the company data, there is an option here, verify company data. There might be some errors in data, so these errors will be verified here. I am clicking on verify company data, company for splitting, accept, no errors found. There are no errors as the data size is very small. Sometimes you may get errors while splitting the company data. Now I am selecting the company, split from which date? I am selecting 1415 as the date for splitting. So it will create two different companies. That is first company starting from 1st April 14 and second company starting from 1st April 15. I am pressing enter and accepting the screen. As soon as I accept, Tally will start the splitting process. The time taken will be depend on the size of data. If your data size is large, it may take some extra time. Here the data size was very small. So the splitting process is completed very soon. Now look at this left hand side portion. This is the original company, company for splitting. 
these two companies are newly created companies from 1st april 2014 and from 1st april 2015 these are the two companies newly created now let us go to this company 1st april 2015 i am going to this company and i am going to display then statement of accounts and statistics there are six vouchers i am pressing alt c i am selecting another company that is company starting from 1st april 2014 i am selecting the period as 14 to 15 there are seven vouchers here in 15 16 there are six vouchers in 14 15 there are seven vouchers now let us select one more company by pressing alt c company for splitting and here let us select the period for two years so overall there were 13 vouchers these 13 vouchers were are splitted into two parts one is 6 and 7 so this is how splitting takes place another feature while discussing erp concept we were talking about compatibility issue the erp software must be compatible with other other softwares so let us uh, try to discuss this issue with the help of tally erp9 import and export of data this is used for exchanging data between different software platforms we can always import and export data from and to tally it is possible very easily how it is possible let us move to tally this is balance sheet if we wish to export this balance sheet <coughs> into excel how we can export i am clicking on this export button language that is default here i am having the format ascii stands for american standard code for information interchange excel format is available html format jpeg pdf and xml let us select excel format where to export the location is default output sheet output file name output sheet name update existing file i am saying no excel spreadsheet formatting required yes with color let us say yes open exported file let us say yes scale factor for values format vertical balance sheet these options are irrelevant at present i am just pressing enter and saying export yes by pressing enter the process is going on the file is exported any type of tally report can be exported to excel this was about exporting the data from tally to excel what about importing data from excel to tally is it possible yes it is really possible but that requires certain amount of programming with the help of programming or with the help of some third party integration software it is possible to import data from excel to tally there is no issue absolutely so in this particular session we tried to discuss some of the concepts related to erp software and we discussed these concepts with the help of a role model that is called as tally erp9 software thank you very much for patient hearing thanks a lot